everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy NASCAR Picks. I'm your host, Michael Ruler 31 First of all, just thank you so much for your viewership recently. We've had over like a thousand views multiple weeks in a row for this um of the cup videos. So really appreciate that. And you know, if we're helping you out, you're helping us back by viewing it and liking the video and subscribing to our channel and sharing with your friends. So continue to do that. That's pretty awesome. Speaking of videos, we have a milestone coming up this week. So uh we are gonna hit our fifth 500th baseball video. So um, you know, check that out. We're gonna probably have some giveaways on that. So that's uh, another good reason to subscribe to the channel. And in the description of the video is always the link to FSI DFS website. And before we get going for NASCAR, I just want to let you know that uh, pro football is coming back. We had the Hall of Fame game on Thursday. Preseason starts this Thursday. FSI is covering it for free. So you can go and subscribe to the website and get into our um, chat where Rod, if you go on Twitter, we posted some of his um, the FSI account, some of his big wins last year. He did an amazing job. So I'll be helping out Rod and some other guys from the FSI crew will be there. And there's a really nice discount on our season long package for NFL currently up on the website. Now we get that in the way. Let's talk racing. And I'm really sad because Michigan race is usually a really decent race um, to watch. And the weather is just going to be abysmal. There's about a 70% chance of rain to an 80% chance of rain all during the time of the race. I don't know if they're going to try to move the race up. Monday doesn't look better either. So I don't know what's going to happen. I just fear it's going to be a choppy race where they get, they, they started and it's delayed. And then, you know, there's another delay and we don't get the full race. And, like with pit strategy or something, some jabroni gets up front and like congratulations, um, JJ Yaley, you have your first cup win and your only cup win ever or something. It probably won't be that egregious, but there's no way Yaley's probably gonna stand in the lead lap. Um, but anyways, uh, just a couple things to look at here on the board. I know we've got a lot of colors again. Uh, qualifying groups were a little bit different there's qual there was cover for a b so the speeds were a little bit faster there so you know we've talked over the last couple of weeks especially in cup where if the weather conditions change and the track gets more grip on it that some of the speeds are faster and it's just nothing that they can really help they have to do them in two groups and sometimes another one group has an advantage over the other one this one's slight i wouldn't say it was like a huge advantage but it was definitely noticeable on the other side, too, we have the playoffs here. So the green people have won and, and they are in. So let me just sort it quickly so it's like easier for you to see visually. So these ones are in the playoffs, no questions asked. These ones, it might be a long shot, but it's probably most likely up to Sindra can point their way in, but I think Haley, Elmerola, and Priest are still enough races. If they do really, really well, they can get there. Pro probably anybody over 50 points probably should be down here in this category who need a win. So Dylan, Briscoe, Jones, Burton, LaJoy, Gillian, and Ty Dylan <clears throat> all pretty much need a win to get into the playoffs. These ones um, are guys that are filling in from Xfinity or don't race full time or qualify for it. So if they win, it doesn't really matter. Um, nothing happens there. And then these guys are on the bubble right here. I believe Kraskowski and Harvick, unless they have some really, really bad string of races, should be in with the amount of points. Bubba McDowell are obviously on the bubble. So I think pretty much you're looking at this range right here for the last two playoff spots so it's gonna be important for bowman elliott suarez and almondinger and gibbs to have good consistent races you have a couple road courses coming up in gibbs almondinger um are pretty good at that so the only concern and, and we'll talk about it in the breakdown too is will these people uh be racing more for stage points than for the win and will that screw up your strategy and um not help you dfs wise so we'll get to that all in the breakdown so let me sort them back by starting position over here <clears throat> i usually do like different similar tracks and stuff and i kind of grouped them all together so the comparable tracks you're looking at here that they've already run this year and there's four and it's beautiful so we got a great group of data and i teams have made a lot of strides so i didn't really want to go back sometimes i go back to like two or three years uh, on similar tracks but with this car, even though they had it last year, I think the teams have figured it out a lot in the off season. So I just wanted to look at just pure 2023 numbers. So Auto Club, Kansas, Las Vegas, and Charlotte were the ones to, to key in. 
here's what their average finish is. Here's what their average running position is. So if there was an accident and they were like, you know, consistently in the, the like the top 10, then, you know, you, you can't always look at finish position. You got to look at the whole story. So we'll start at the top. Um, and here we have the practice feed, what their difference was between practice and qualifying. Cause sometimes that helps see, me see like things pop on the data sheet. And then where did they rank? Uh, I actually, there was a lot of ones that ran like five and 10 lap averages. So I looked at that and then these are like the best, I believe five lap averages. So that kind of helps with long run speed. So this is a track where tire wear does not matter really. Um, some people could, you could go the whole race and not change your tires and not have that much fall off. So you got to have long run speed. So Christopher Bell definitely looked really good out there. Uh, you know, he's been a top five car almost most of these ones except for Auto Club, but that was early in the season. I think he had an early wreck there. So that's why his finish looks a little bit off there. But number two in practice, number four in long run speed. I think he's be highly owned. It's hard to pass the leader here. So if he can get out there and be the early dominator, I don't think he's going to dominate the whole race. And as we saw last year, some of these cars that were like started in the teens are able to get up there and lead um, a bunch of laps and, and and do quite well. So I think, you know, you're, you're going to look for a bunch of dominators, but he's been fast. His pit crew is the one that just keeps on screwing, but he has the first uh, pit stall. So that should help him also. Ross Chastain has not had the speeds here, even though like his finish and his average run position look good. He just uh, he's got good short run speed, but not long run speed. So, you know, he might be able to get out there early and get past Bell and be able to uh, lead the race for a little bit. But I think he's going to keep on falling back, falling back, falling back. And that just seems like be the problem with this track house. So I haven't missed a GPP. Ty Gibbs, this might be a little controversial for me to put him in catch, but he has been solid. He has had a really good run recently when it's come to um, these uh, types of tracks. And I think he's starting to really start to figure some things out. And I think, you know, he's definitely one that we need to make sure that we're um, considering here. Because he just, you know, at Pocono he had a, he had a top five. I know that it's not one of the tracks, but um, you know, some of the Xfinity drivers compared it, the style of the track to that, and that's something that they just ran on recently. Fourth in practice, third in long run speed. So I think there's a lot of upside here, especially at 8100. Again, I'm not saying he's a cash lock by any means, but I think if you're doing a more balanced lineup, that he's one that you can put in. Busher, I'm going to fade here. I think he definitely benefited from the um, Group B. The Fords have not been as fast here, except for the Penske ones, and and their owner owns the track. So, I mean, they they might have some some more in-depth knowledge of it that helps them out here. But uh, just not good in long run speed. Like, practice was in the 14. So, uh, this is not a top five car. I think he's going to fall back. So, uh, a fade for me. Martin Chuex Jr. I think will be very chalky just with his current form. He was the fastest in practice, fifth in long run speed. And if you look at his finish and average run speed was really good. So he's one to definitely consider um, for uh, a dominator early on. If he can work his his, his way up there, it's, um, you know, he's not been the best in this this package even though these like in some of the other races but in the style of track he, he should be good here logano again here's the penske car i think he's a gpp he does really well in um in clean air so if you can get out there in front it'll be great but like his practice times uh, weren't great like he did qualify well but he i think benefited in being like t in the top five and, and advancing but if you look at his numbers he's like a car that's in the teens but you know, even last year, I think he ended up getting into the top 10 after not looking great in practice and qualifying and just kind of was there during the race and worked his way up and um, had end up having a good day. Just, you know, didn't make any type of mistakes like other people did, but still just not sold on him. I'd rather play some of these other uh, cars up here. So GPP tag. Byron, I'm going to give him the prime tag. I know that Hendrick cars have struggled. I know that last week was um, not ideal, but he has just been like really, really fast in 
in these races and, he, and he's got up there and qualified well and he just looked amazing in in practice their third fastest best in long run speed and just overall just looked um really decent so i think he's gonna be fine i know again like i said hendrick in this track has just not been the best at, at some points but i think that he'll be fine here so i really like him as a prime play i think he's going to get up there and, and probably lead some laps in, in this race and, and have a good day. So out of all the ones up here, I'm going to lock him in as my prime. Kyle Busch is always first guy on my GPP. He's had a lot of success here. Tenth in practice, but second in uh, long run speed. So um, didn't have great short run speed, but the long run speed looked decent. Uh, it's mixed results this year here in finishes and uh, average run position. But I think, you know, he's definitely one that um, has potential to be sneaky. Ryan Blaney, GPP, same thing as Logano. Like, they know the track well. I think he's going to have high ownership just because of the namesake. Six in practice, seven in the long run speed. Average running position, 11th. So it's not horrible, but I just don't see that there's, like, a ton of upside. But people, I think, will look back at Charlotte. And Charlotte, he was really good. He was the most dominated car out there. It's a comparable track. So if they can bring the same setup and, and car here, even though it's not exactly the same track, then I think he's okay. Chase Elliott, cash here, just because he's going to get in the desperation mode. He probably needs a win. He might be able to point his way in after being suspended and missing time with injury. And I think, you know, the, most of the Hendrick cars had penalties also this season for <clears throat> unapproved parts and, and things like that. Like nothing really says he's going to dominate, but I think at 9,500, like with the desperation, he should be up there. But again, I think the concern is, is, is he going to be focusing more on trying to accumulate as many stage points as possible? And that's not going to give him great track position towards the end to be able to be up there to win the race and have a solid day. Bubba Wallace was amazing here last year. I believe he had the pole and finished second. But he said that this, the lot has changed and this car is not the same as last year. So they had a lot of work to do um, during practice and qualifying. So, you know, Bubba's, these 2311 cars have definitely had um, good speed at these types of tracks, along with the rest of the Toyotas. So, uh, 13th in practice, 12th in the wrong run speed, top 12 in all the other matrix. So I think he's, he's very interesting. And again, if you're going with the balance bill, these eight K guys, I, I think, you know, Gibbs and, and Wallace definitely make an intriguing bill. I think I'd like Keselowski a little bit better. Uh, he's pretty solidly in should be on points again. Like he can't be super aggressive. And if he, he's messes up a bunch of races, he could start losing the cushion that he has, but I think he'll be fine starting 12th. I think you know, maybe a little bit. I know that the Fords we said are a little bit inflated. So I think you can play him in cash here, but it's not necessarily a, a lock. Again, maybe his qualifying time is a little bit inflated with that. Um, didn't have great long run speed. So, but uh, you know, I, I think he's definitely one to, to consider in your cash pool if you're going balance, building the 8K. But I think he might be again in no man's land if you're trying to get some of these 10K guys in, like we did in Xfinity, and play some of the lower ones. Um, uh, speaking of Xfinity, sorry, that was just such a, a train wreck. I don't understand how you can be an overly aggressive car, cause a major wreck, be kind of involved, and then go and win the race like John Hunter Nemechek did. But that's why he's always a GPP play because it, it's stuff like that. It's, um, you know, yes, he won the race, and yes, he was probably in all the all, uh, optimal lineups, but still, like the just causing a wreck and being overly aggressive there just never bodes well for cash lineups. So, okay, well, back to Cup here. So, Denny Hamlin, I think he's another GPP play. I think he'll be highly owned here just based on, you know, being dummy Denny Hamlin and people like to play him. Uh, practice 16th, 19th in long run speed. Uh, average running position has been decent on these tracks here. The finishes haven't been as good. Uh, just, you know, 13th. So that's pretty much where he's starting at 10, 7. You really need him to get out there and, like, lead some laps and, and, and uh, get some place differential. So I don't know if he he's going to be able to, although the Toyotas have been really good here. So um, I think a, a GPP, I don't know if I can play in cash. General Suarez, same thing. Need some points here. It's kind of like Chase Elliott. Kind of worries me that he's going to be trying to prioritize stage um, finishes over trying to win the race. So starting a little bit far forward, maybe he benefited from the good weather conditions. Didn't have long run speed 
here. Overall, it probably looks like he potentially should finish where he starts. I don't know if that really gets it done for me, so it's a GPP. Reddick I have as a cash here. I'm a little bit hesitant. I think it'll be highly owned because, like I said, 23-11 cards look decent. Ninth in practice, 10th in long run speed, um, 13th in average run, 15th, so 92 is not bad bad again and it's a nice little discount here because he could be a secret dominator the only thing that concerns me about him is if you look at the track it's it's pretty much worn out after they they paved it's not like worn out like really bad like um auto club and some of the other ones where it chews up tires it, it's like pretty much perfect the way it's it's worn down uh but they do have like a darker area i don't know if they put down like px or whatever the stuff is to give more grip to create a second lane but we saw lajoy and we saw larson if you get up too high and um reddick's one that likes to try to find a high groove close to that wall there's a lot of debris and it takes you right into the wall so i just that's my only mild concern here but i think everything else you know he's he's in he's going for like wins here just to boost his his playoff positioning he's already in the playoffs i think there's a lot of upside here with reddick but there's just a slight um caution but again i think he's a nice price break from some of the 10k guys austin dylan definitely benefited from the nicer weather conditions although his fall off was in the top 16 there 22nd in practice gpp uh, just nothing really jumps out here he needs the win to get in so um you know definitely will be shooting for the stars here so we'll see what happens I think uh larson will be one of the higher owners with chalk just because of the place differential potential here in 17th he was eighth in practice, but he didn't have long run speed. So I just, and Larson, again, he's been kind of like John Hunter Nemechek, a boomer bust. You can win the race, you can dominate the race, or you can have a tire issue, wreck, -ish, wreck early, just just bad luck. So if you look at his like average finish and, and um, running position, there's just nothing like really jumps out here. Like he's definitely going to have to get up there and lead laps and probably finish in the top five to pay off his price tag. So think he's a little bit risky here that's why i don't have him in cash but i think a lot of people will be playing him in cash eric almanrola stuart haas um the only reason i might play him in gpp is because he wasn't in the faster group in qualifying and he did qualify in the top 20 but 24th in practice 15th in the long run that's the only thing that gives him a gpp probably should be a fade but Chase Briscoe, I do have him as a, as a fade, like starting way too far forward. Or just 28th, didn't have the long run speed. I see him going backwards. He's basically, you look at his number, he's like barely in the top 25 in Matrix here. So not excited there. Alex Bowman starting um, 20th. I think he was my lock of the race here. I mean, if you don't want to play Byron as, as the prime dominator, you, you can pick so many other people in the 10K range. I've, I've made the case for him. If you want to start up with Bell leading there, if you want to go Truex, if you want to go with Hamlin, if you want to go with Larson, I'm fine with that. But lock in Bowman. Seventh in practice. He was in the slower qualifying group, which kind of pushed his thing down, which is going to give us place differential. differential. Sixth in long run speed. Seventh overall. He has the second best finish overall to Truex on these races this season. And like his average running position is 10th. So lots of good things there. Um, absolutely really like Bowman. Again, he's another one that really needs to do well i don't think i think he's to the point where he's i don't think he yet is going to try to play the um stage game i think he's going to try for the win but even if he tries to get to the stage game you're getting 10 place different points even if he's like trying to get like 10th so uh, lots of good things there really like him cindric i i was off on so much on the season but he's in better form recently here Again, he started in A, so like his his starting isn't he might be starting a little bit too far forward, but he is a Penske car. The other Penske cars we like, even though he's 26 in practice, like slow with short run speed, his long run speed, I think you can you can pass cars within the pack. It's hard to pass cars up front, but within the pack, it's not hard. So I think he can pick off cars and move up like maybe five to seven places here. Uh you know, he's he's only 5,900, so I think that definitely, you know, helps you. So I like him in cash. 
Harvick, I have him in cash, but this is a hard decision here. Kevin Harvick has been masterful at Michigan, but he looked bad in practice here. He was 18th in the long run speed. The Fords haven't been great, especially the Stuart Haas ones. So there's a lot of concern. But for the whole track overall, he has been, you know, ninth <clears throat> in finish and 11th overall. So similar tracks, he's been pretty dominant. He just didn't look good here. But last year, if you look at his practice times, they were in the teens and he was able to, to move up and have a solid day. I mean, it wasn't a elite day. He wasn't like dominating in this race. So he needs to do a lot to pay off at 10-3. His, his price tag is way high. He probably should be like 9-3 here. But I think they looked at his like track history and stuff. And that's why DK priced him up. So I have him as cash. If there's a lot of place differential upside here but he's really going to need to get up there and again he's another one that has a comfortable Lula Kozlowski I'm sure he'd love to win to solidify himself and to try to give himself some more playoff points once they get to the playoffs but um again he's he's cash but borderline cash for me Medal I'll give him a GPP not his track style he's another forward uh, he's 17th in the long run speed, which is, is decent. Um, so I think he can stay in the top 25, but I don't expect a ton of upside here. AJ Elmendinger, he's so close. Um, I think he wants to not point his way, but I think he wants to actually race his way in and not like try to do the stage points. He might. I think he's got two road courses ahead of him if he can't. So I think here's the chance to, to try to do well win the race. 12th in practice, 11th in long run speed, was in the slower qualifying group. So even if he has an average day, and even if he's trying, <clears throat> again, look at how far he has to move up, even if he's playing the place differential, or not the, the stage game to try to get those stage points, he's going to have to be in the top 10. And even if he falls into like the top 15 because he loses track position because of pit strategy, because of prioritizing stage points over trying to win the race, he's still getting a ton of place differential. So really like him. He's a good play there. Eric Jones is GPP. He needs to win to get in. A legacy hasn't been super fast and didn't have long run speed. 18th in practice, but again, I think he might be, he was in the faster qualifying group too here. So last man in, that's good. Um, you know, if you, if you need somebody in this range, but I'm not super stoked on him. Justin Haley, I'm going to go to the prime tag here too. Haley is kind of... I think he needs to win more than to point his way in, but I know he's leaving colleague, but I have seen nothing that colleague has taken any resources or anything away from him. Colleague still wants, and it's evident they sent AJ Almondinger to race because colleague wants to run, win races. So I think even though JJ Haley is leaving, whether it was his decision or colleague's decision, we don't know that they are definitely going to do everything they can to see if they can get him into the playoffs. He is very close. Also, they'd love to get both cars in. They're going to give him the resources He's 15th overall finish in tracks like this, 21st overall average running position. So obviously he has been there in the end where others have struggled. And even though he hasn't run like really well during the day, his finishes are much better than where he's running, which shows like that some um, you uh, stay out of trouble and, and do your job at these tracks. So that's why I give him the prime play here. Love the price tag. Stenthouse GPP, again, not a great long run speed. He's definitely, you know, his numbers with average finish is 13th. So within the top 15 for these four tracks, that's pretty impressive. So, and he does well in this package. So I think he's more of a GPP than a cash play, but definitely someone to consider. Priest is a fade here. I think he's starting too far forward. His um, starting time is probably inflated by the weather. Uh, Burton, I usually have his fade, but I think because he was an A, he's looked a little bit better recently. He needs to win to get in. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think he's going to be at this ride this year, but I think he's auditioning for next year. Uh, his all his numbers say 25. That's about five place differential points here. The dude's 5'7. And, you know, even though I treat him like Joe Graff Jr. as the human caution flag, I think he'll be fine here. So, uh, GPP Austin Hill. He's coming up, you know, he ran really good here in Xfinity, but this isn't an Xfinity car. So um, it's a GPB, just really didn't have the speed. Corey LaJoy did. He crashed in practice, got up again in that stuff here, banged up the car. I think it's fixable, definitely. I don't think it's going to slow him down to be an issue. If he, Even if he starts from the back, he can get back ahead of these um, slower cars that didn't have the speed in practice. So 
I think, you know, a lot of people, he should potentially be a prime play down here, but just because of the, uh, they need to fix the car, I couldn't do it, but I still put him in cash. Gillian's another one if you're trying to do Ken K ones that I think you can play as a GPP. Cole Custer's Vade, these Rick Ware cars didn't have speed. Uh, he could lose like four or five spots here and um, may not stay in the lead lap. Dylan, I think is okay here as a GPP at 5K. Uh, again, you know, all these guys are risky, but if you're trying to get multiple 10K guys and doing like a three King lineup here, you're going to need these um, guys to save you some money. So uh, none of them were great in practice, so you're going to need attrition. Barry at 64, he's filling in for Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson has been suspended from NASCAR, well, first by his team and then by NASCAR for um, liking something inappropriate on social media. I'm not going to get into it. You can Google it and find out the information on it. Um, it's out there everywhere. So Barry didn't really have much time, just filed out yesterday morning that he was going to come jump in here. Uh, it's not a Hendrick car like he drove for some of the other races here. This car has been slow, looked horrible in practice. I don't expect a ton, but in GPP, it is Josh Barry. And, you know, he's probably better than some of the other drivers down here. So, not necessarily the equipment, but um, so, and I'm sorry, it, it says Spire. It's, it's not correct. He is in the 42, which is a legacy. So let me change that. And then Yaley and Blickley, the same thing. I mean, they're super cheap. If you need punts down here, then, you know, it is what it is. I, I think Yaley is probably better than Blicky, definitely. But uh, starting, you know, dead last, they have no place to go but up. And again, if you're if punting, that's what you need to do. So that's what I got for you. Hopefully the weather is not doesn't screw up the race up too much but as always if you have a question put them in the chat below hit me up at my 31 on extra twitter whatever we're calling it this day uh again like i said at the beginning of the video check out um description of the video go to the fsi dfs website and if you want to sign up for nascar package like five dollars a week uh fifteen dollars for a month it's like really really cheap there we've got baseball we got nfl football coming back free preseason if you want to get in for that pga um, you know, just on the rise in a couple months of NHL and NBA. So a lot coming back for the fall and check out our 500th video for baseball and what, you know, we're going to announce some giveaways for that too. So, and again, as the videos help you, please like subscribe to our channel. So you know, the video is coming out and share with your friends. And thank you so much for the thousands of you that continue to watch these uh, videos week after week after week. So appreciate that. So I'm Edgar 31. I'm going to get out of here. So good luck in your contest today. Hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.